channel. Today I have some really fun things to show you. Um, we have a new illustration. I created this for my patrons for the month of February, but the rest of the prints are now available in my shop. So I'll show you the process of making Rosie the pig. And I'm also going to share with you this new product I have. It's, um, it's this wooden layered artwork <laughs> scene. It's called Into the Bramble. So you can stay tuned for that. And I'm also going to show you some of my new tea towels and uh, cloth napkins, all the table linens that I designed for spring and have been sewing myself. I'll also give you a little update on my seeds. If you watched my last video, you saw that I was sewing some little um, Icelandic poppy seeds indoors to start before they get moved out to the garden. It's my first time ever doing it and I definitely started off wrong, <laughs> but I do have some seedlings, so I will show you those as well. So I wanted to show you how I created this. I was so excited about it. As you can see, there are four layers and I've even hidden a little duck on a nest on the very back one. Um, whether you're an adult or a kid, I think you will like this, but when I did that, I was kind of thinking about when I was little, if this was mine, like if I had this in my room, I would probably love peeking back there at that little duck. So anyway, this was a new type of project for me. I used the same company um, that I worked with for my wooden ornaments, but I've never done a layered scene like this in wood. At college, I did do some paper cut scenes similar to this. So that was kind of the method that I used for beginning this idea um, and kind of fleshing it out. Once I figured out what what parts of the scene were gonna be on what layer, I sketched them onto watercolor paper and I began doing my painting. Um, to make sure that they all lined up though, I just roughly went in with an X-Acto knife and kind of cut them out. Obviously this wasn't you know, my final design and quite as smooth as it turns out in the wood but it allowed me to make sure that everything was gonna line up the way that I wanted it to. Now, the difference between holding it like this and seeing it like that is that these ones are spread out and they have some space between. Um, so I also had to make the base design, which I had um, go from more of a greenish yellow to a, um, a more of a yellowish green to a bluish green in the back because I was kind of working with that for the scene to create some atmospheric perspective. Um, and then I kind of just held them out on here to see. I got Alex's help to hold some of them, but I held them to see if I liked the spacing and I decided I just wanted them to be evenly spaced across. So then I put them in Photoshop and followed um, the instructions by my partner on how to, you know, make all of these little notches and stuff. So let me show you what it looks like when I get it. This is actually how it will come to you if you order one from my shop. They have a kind of like a paper sticker backing on the front and the back. So you just gently peel that off and then it reveals the artwork. So you have all of the pieces. As you can see, the base still has the squares in it, the little rectangles, but you can easily just pop those out. But it comes like this because this is just gonna be the safest way for it to ship. You can imagine it would be kind of challenging to pad this properly. Um, and everything just kind of pops in. Now, if you wanted to, to make it just like a little bit more permanent, you could probably put some wood glue down there, but that's not really something I felt like I needed to do. Um, you could have some fun with changing the order of these, which I haven't actually done yet, because all of the holes and the notches, um, the tabs are in the same spot. <laughs> so, 
you could change it to look like that if you wanted to. Anyway, um, it's, it's a really fun art piece and I can see it being fun on a bookshelf, um, in a children's bedroom, as a cake topper if you wanted to put like, you know, a piece of wax paper or something like in between it and the icing. I think that would just be so sweet on a cake. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I feel like I need to make a cake just so I can try that because I think it'd be really cute on a carrot cake. Um, but so the first round of pre-orders of those sold out. Um, I'm doing pre-orders one to be able to fund these items and also to get some committed orders because a lot of the time I can take polls on what people want on Instagram and I can usually count on about 1% of those people actually purchasing. So pre-orders allow me to actually order a reasonable amount of products that I know is very likely to sell or is already spoken for. So yes, I opened it up for a small batch and those already sold before I've gotten this video out, but I do have a few people who told me that they missed it and they'd really like to get it, so I think I will open it up for another small batch. Um, if I get way more orders than I'm expecting, I will increase the size of the batch, but um, anyway, I am functioning on a pretty small scale here typically, and um, yeah, if you want to stay up to date with my shop updates and things like that, I highly recommend um, joining my my email newsletter because that is where I send out all of the updates of when there's something new. <sighs> right now on Instagram, my stuff is only being seen by like 7% of my 11,000 followers. So that is a very small amount, especially when it's like an even smaller percentage of people that are purchasing. So um, yes, I really appreciate if you join that. I will I'll put my email newsletter link below so that you can stay up to date. Um, I try not to bombard with emails, but around the time of a shop update, I do usually send one out saying, it's coming soon, it's here, and it's almost sold out. So um, you might get a few in a row, but then it'll be like, you know, a month or two before you get an email. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'm really excited about this scene. Um, comment below if it's something that you're excited about. I am planning on doing um, this as a series. So like little seasonal ones, maybe one for, I guess this one was spring, and then do a summer one fall or autumn and winter. So I think that would be really fun. Let me know if you'd like it to still be bunnies or if you want it to be different animals. Like are we following the same characters for the seasons or what? So yeah, let me know what you think and what your ideas are. I'm really excited about these table linens. Um, I don't have any napkins left in stock to show you, but these are the tea towels. So I've done a design that is bunnies and hedgehogs and forget-me-nots and uh, daffodils. And these are all cotton linen canvas. So they have a really nice texture to them. Um, kind of just like, you know, earthy and natural feeling. So I have that design and then the strawberries, which is honestly my favorite. Um, I did this pattern back in 2016 actually, when I was living in Hawaii. Uh, my main thing I was aiming at doing then was textile design. So this was one of the patterns that I made and it's strawberries and forget-me-nots and the little strawberry blossoms and it's very like wild and colorful and happy. And all of these also have a little hang tab. So you can hang it from like a knob in your kitchen if you want to. So there are napkins that match these and they have a red border. I'll insert a picture. And then there's also napkins that match these. I will show you the fabric for those. This was some that came with a slight defect so I can't really sell it. But it does show you the the texture of the fabric itself. It has like a little bit of a sheen to it and this is organic cotton sateen. Um, 
this particular batch came with these like fine lines on it so it's being reprinted and I'll probably just sew something for myself with these. Uh, I do have a number of like squares from this same kind of thing happening that I have saved to maybe make a quilt or maybe they'll just be napkins for me. But anyway, um, you can see it has kind of like a luxurious quality to the fabric. So that's what the, the napkin fabric is made of for all of the designs. And then this is also a floral design that I did probably in 2017 when I was living in Oregon. So it's kind of nice to have these files saved that I, so that I can like change up the backgrounds and use them for different things. At the time when I made this, I was just offering things on Society6, but now that I'm trying to offer more things in my shop that are um, more natural fiber and less of a, an impact on the environment, um, I'm able to use some of these these things I made. So there's bearded iris and um, peonies and garden roses. Um, these roses were actually inspired by the ones in my wedding bouquet. They were kind of like an electric pink color that I don't know. I just didn't even know existed. They were very cool. Um, oh, and then some kind of little like orange clover. So. These are available in my shop and they are in stock, ready to ship to you. As I was going to be making my Rosie the Pig illustration, I had never actually painted a pig before and I really wanted to make sure that I got the skin like texture and the lighting right on her little pig face. And <laughs> I mean that in the best way. Um, and I thought I would look at one of my favorite artists work, um, Holly Hobby. I had Toot and Puddle books growing up um, when I was little and they were like my favorite. So I looked at her and I looked at Beatrix Potter because um, she also did Swiss Pig Robinson, um, which ultimately, so <laughs> it's a style that wasn't like quite as similar to what I was hoping to do, but I did want to see how she handled doing his skin. One of the things I did take from this was just like the darker pink shadows and also her use of, um, I think a little bit of brown ink in the outline, which is just a little bit softer than black. It goes in and out um, around like his forehead of being like a reddish brown to black. And I think that that works really nicely. So that was something that I decided to kind of implement. And then, Toot and Puddle are just, it's just like one of the best, I think it's one of the best children's books ever. When I was in like first grade, me and my best friend dressed up as them for a school project. Um, so that was really fun. Go to some of my favorite illustrations from this. On this one you can see that what she's done is she's kind of highlighted him in this yellow and white, which gives you the feeling of the sun streaming in and almost like makes you feel warm looking at it. Um, one thing I love about Holly Hobby's work, um, especially in Toot and Puddle, is how expressive they are, um, especially with body language. You can see that she leaves a lot of the highlights just white um, and then brings in like a little thick brown watercolor outlining in certain areas. And this is just one of my favorite pages in this whole thing. It is so happy and the light is just really cool. I mean, look at the side of him is almost totally white here. So You'll see in the painting, but um, this is a, a print you can purchase in my shop. Um, when I did mine, I tried to leave that those highlights on her, and I kind of took that as a uh, note from Holly Hobby.
I told you that I would be giving you an update on seedlings, so I will do that. So here we are. In my last video, I think I explained that I didn't know about pre-wetting the soil mix, or I guess it's not even soil, but whatever, the potting medium. And uh, that led to me first just spraying all of them. And then it led to me using this um, old, like, a skincare serum bottle and filling it with water and just like dropping it into each thing but I also just wanted them to get a lot of water so I just watered on top which I know you weren't supposed to do and what that ended up doing um, was pushing the seedlings to the edges but I couldn't see them because they were so small they were like a grain of this dirt so Anyway, <laughs> they are all at different stages because all of the cells in here began to accept water at different rates. Uh, but hopefully they'll all be ready within like a week of each other and then I can move them outside. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to purchase any of the things that you saw me making in this video or talking about, um, all of my artwork is in my shop, which I will link below for you. And I hope you have a great day. Bye.